This episode was helped brought to you by our newest sponsor, Kelowna Brewing Company. They're a brewery out there in Eastern Iowa. So if you're in the area, make sure to stop by Kelowna and check out their brewery. Great food at the restaurant there. Great beer, obviously. If you're in the Midwest, check out any Hy-Vee's. I believe they carry the six packs and they have different types of flavors. So you guys are going to want to, you know, definitely try that out. And I think throughout this whole process, Fishing Kid and myself for Beer Fish Fanatics, we're going to be doing some giveaways here and there. If you guys can go ahead and tag us here and there with your Kelowna beer. So other than that, enjoy the episode, guys. All right, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Beer Fish Fanatics. This is Granny with Mop Pop Fishing. We have Kit with the Fishing Kit YouTube channel. And he he got it out right today. And I, I messed up because the last couple episodes, he couldn't say his own name for a oh, while. I, I butchered it bad last week, man. <laughs> yeah. So, and everybody's listening and watching. We have a great guest today. Uh, we, we've been working to try, I've been working to try to get her on here for quite some time because um, I actually do follow her quite a bit. It's really cool to, in a way, to me, it's inspirational because uh, what she brings everything to the industry of fishing and all that stuff. So um, mm -hmm. super excited to have you on here. We got Nicole Jacobs fishing. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me guys. And You're welcome. today just to kind of give everybody a heads up, what I am drinking <laughs> is uh, one of our sponsors beer. It's a uh, Kelowna brewing company and I'm doing the uh, startup stout again. Uh, I love stouts obviously. And then uh, my wife Sorry, I'm drinking her beer because I was supposed to save her a couple. Um, it's all right. It's only two I have left. So Still me, on her uh, beer already, huh? Yeah. What do you got, Kit? Uh, I got the uh, Kelowna Brewing Company. It's the Such a Much IPA. If anybody's been uh, following our podcast for a while, I love IPAs. And this one's pretty smooth. It's not super bitter. I think it'd be an easy IPA for uh, non-IPA drinkers to get into. <laughs> Gotcha. All right. Cheers. Kate. And then, uh, I'm drinking water. There oh, you go. Cheers. Cheers, cheers, Nicole. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> oh yeah. That's good. Um, just to kind of give everybody hits up, whoever's listening and watching also make sure, I think we were talking right kit that, um, if you guys go to high V, they actually, uh, distribute the beer for a uh, Kelowna brewing. So make sure you guys go pick it up and do us a favor, tag us in a picture of you buying yourself a beer. Cause you know, if you want to buy us a beer, it'd be great, but go buy a beer for yourself, tag us on there. And then what I think Fishing Kit and myself are going to do is uh, let us know. I'm going to ship you guys a koozie, a Beer Fish Fanatic koozie. Cool. I love it. There you go. <laughs> so um, other than that, let's talk about fishing. Is that is that okay with you, Nicole? Of course. I don't know um, if you don't mind. Can you tell everybody a little bit about yourself, your background? Uh, just kind of, you know, it's just to let everybody know what you're about and what you bring to the industry a little bit, if you don't mind. Uh, of course. Um, yeah, a little bit about me. I'm from Minnesota. I uh, born and raised here in uh, Great Lakes, 10,000 Lakes. Um, I got started fishing really young with my father. He used to, we have a cabin up north on Rush Lake, kind of in the north. We always go up north to cabins. It's kind of what we do in the summer because we have short summers. Um, so I really uh, enjoyed our time up there it instilled my passion at a young age and that was always our time to go fishing and father daughter bonding moments uh, I just always loved the thrill of fishing catching the fish and I was always super competitive with my sisters of course uh, <laughs> catch most um, but not only that but my dad taught us about you know being good people um, and messages about God and putting God in victory family first, but really what fueled my whole career was after he died uh, cancer in 2012. Uh, it fueled my whole career. I wanted to do something to really honor his life um, and really just kind of follow my passion for competing in a sport. I've always been an athlete. I always competed in three sports in high school and I was missing that competitive drive. And so after that, after he w died, I was actually, it's a little, my testimony I was in a rollover car accident and then laid off. So like within three months, this happened. And then I found my new church. We went on a mission trip to Nicaragua and started doing these tournaments. Cause I was like, this is how I can compete, can do fishing, can keep my dad close, but also do this competitive aspect. And I fell in love with the, the sport of uh, competitive fishing. I did a local derby with one rod and fell in love with it. And after my trip to Nicaragua, 
is when God said, you're going to be a role model in fishing. And so I started, uh, came back and did a lot of local stuff. I was always in sales. So I built a business plan and uh, did a lot of charity work. And then I did my first Bassmaster Open as a co-angler in 2014. <laughs> I went on a whim down to Douglas Lake, Tennessee. I had no idea what the real industry was about. I had no idea what I was getting into at all. But it was the like, coolest thing ever. I was just doing the BFLs up here. I uh, went down there and I got 14 places as a co-angler, one of the only females. We had a couple females um, doing it, but not a lot at the time. And then six months later, out of the blue, Walmart called me and asked me to fish the FLW tour. So I fished the tour as a co from 2015 to 16. Um, and then a bunch of female fishing rod in Walmart. And now really my whole mission in fishing is just to empower others to follow their passions through faith and fishing. So that's really my testimony. So I do a lot of advocacy, a lot of charity work, a lot of just, you know, that's what I stand for is to empower people, to bring people to Christ and to bring people to fishing. Um, this year, I'm just really getting back into the tournament swing. Um, my son got is older, so he's 14 now. When, he, when I was younger, I travel a little more, but now that he's older, I got to be closer to home, but I'm going to do a couple, couple more national derbies this year. So nice. Yeah. I just signed up for the Northern opens. Woo. I think I saw, <laughs> I, I think I saw that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Nicole, you're Nicole, you're going to have to kind of explain the whole, how the tournament scene works because okay. uh, I, I don't follow the tournaments too much. Yeah. Like when you say BLW, FLW. <laughs> All right. Circuit, Am I speaking like way over the head. Okay. Yeah. I'll, yeah. Okay. I'll tone it down. <laughs> you, yeah. You're going to have to because I, I mean, I'm not saying anything wrong with our listeners or, or, or viewers or anything, but to myself, I, you know, I, I okay. What okay. is yeah. MLF and yeah. FLW? Like, like Kit was saying, like, we're just a bunch of guys who love to fish and we fish a lot and we love to drink beer. But, that's how I started, you know, like just in a boat, you know, and that's how most, that's most of the world. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and then now if you don't mind, cause you, you're going to learn us today. So <laughs> what are these circuits? What are they stand for? Acronyms? Yeah. So back when I like was doing circuits, there's a lot of club derbies. I'm sure you guys are used to just club tournaments. You can fish with local people. So FLW stood for fishing league worldwide. They were just recently bought, uh, last year by Major League Fishing. So now there's only two major bass circuits, um, Major League Fishing and Bass Masters. So um, I fished for FLW, who is now Major League Fishing for two years on the the highest ranking tour, which it was at the time, like compared to the Bassmaster Elite. So okay. up there, but as a co-angler. So in bass tournaments, there's a pro on the boat and a co-angler. So you're on a boat. The pro is in charge of the boat. The co is on the back of the boat. That's why there's two decks on a bass boat. Our co, what I was when I fished for Walmart, fishes for their best five fish and the pros fishing for their fish. So really a co is a perfect way to learn and like you want to eventually fish as a pro. Mm -hmm. um, I'm fishing as a co again this year just because I'm going to be fishing local stuff as a boater, but I wanted to get some national stuff under my belt and learn some new water that I haven't fished. So I like to learn from different people and you can never stop learning when you're fishing. Um, Co-angler is the best way to learn. Um, and it's the best way to learn from the pro. You ask a ton of questions. If had I not fished the FLW tour as a co-angler for two years, I would not be the angler I am today because of those, those anglers, but you are still competing for 20 grand. So like when I fished the FLW tour, we are competing for 20 grand. You're still competing for a check. So it's a totally different way of fishing though. You are competing against the pro in a different manner, but you're not. Does that make sense? Like, so you're not, are you a team or because? No, you're not a team. So the pro okay. fishing against other pros and the co's fishing against other co's. Gotcha. But like the co, the pro doesn't want you to catch their fish. So, <laughs> okay. okay. Like, I gotta remember I caught a four pounder behind Larry Nixon and it was like, he was like, he wasn't that happy. <laughs> like, it's a four pounder. You're like, um, I had but, no idea. Okay. Cause no, no, I, I thought you guys were as a team, but okay. Now okay. no, like co-anglers, co you got to fish differently. You want to fish finesse. You want to fish differently because usually the pros are very good anglers. They're not going to allow you to catch fish. Some of them are great. Like I went about it on the tour. Like I'm going to be their cheerleader. I'm going to learn. And if I catch fish, I'm going to catch fish. 
Um, I didn't do as well as I wanted to looking back. I wish I would have, but I did cash a check or two, but um, now I'm like a totally different angler. I've fished as a boater in the BFLs and a pro off the front. I love fishing as a boater, but I still think every angler out there has an opportunity to learn and that everyone should fish as co at some point in their life to, to learn those, those little things that you would never pick up. Um, you would learn things from a pro. He'd probably fish a bait a certain way that you would never had a million years guessed he's throwing this for bass and you'd be like, wow, I just learned that. And I didn't know that, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, we, we had, uh, I don't know if you know, uh, Nick, the informative fisherman on, and he, he highly recommend, recommended that if anybody's ever thinking of getting into tournament fishing and, uh, you know, become a pro fisherman, he goes, to, he goes, do him a favor and do yourself a favor co-angle for at least two years yeah. he said yeah. he said two years yeah. he goes minimum yeah. two years before you even consider going pro on your own he goes yeah, yeah and I did that and that's what I did I did it for two to three years and then I went to the front I love being in the front I like making my own decisions and stuff but, we're probably gonna um, get I'm probably gonna get chewed up on this episode because they're gonna be like dude how the hell did you not know that they're like two separate I thought they were a team so I'm no get- there are team tournaments out there they just came out with yeah. this new uh Bass Pro just came out today or today or yesterday with this who new million dollar um, amateur league where yeah, this is a team. So mm-hmm. that's a change in the game. There's always uh-huh. new tournaments coming out, new formats. So the major leagues in this bass world are the Bassmaster and the uh, major league fishing. So cool. you want to reach the top. Most anglers strive to make it to the top. You know, Bassmaster leads to the best anglers in the country bass um in major league fishing there's the bass uh pro tour so those are the best in the country as well um so people strive for that for me like of course i would love to be at the top like that i look at it if i can be at the top i can reach more people to christ but that's not like my ultimate goal my goal is to stay grounded with my family and to to just reach as many people as possible through fishing so cool and I'm older too. I mean, I'm 37 with a 14 year old mom trying to fish the tour. I mean, you've sacrificed a lot. Those guys have a really brutal schedule. Uh, I give them all the credit in the world because it's very much a sacrifice to do you're, that. You're killing me. I, I just turned 40, <laughs> man. You're killing me. I know, but I'm like, God. <laughs> hey, yeah, you're right. The best is yet to come. I heard, you know. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> We're not there yet. Hey, the best is yet to come, right? Exactly. You got little girls, right? Yes. Four amazing, beautiful. Four. Crazy. <laughs> we had three girls in my family. So my dad was all girls. Even her dog was girl. So <laughs> same here. So God bless. Oh, gosh. <laughs> God <Yeah>. bless him. <laughs> yep. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you take them fishing? Um, I do. We taken uh they they actually been crying well not crying, but they've been whining the last couple probably couple weeks as my my wife's been on call. She works at the hospital and they are completely addicted to ice fishing and fishing with this guy. So yeah, they they only like going when I go. <laughs> yeah. They go, Dad, you're okay, but you, you know, you don't catch as much fish as Uncle Kit. I'm like, dang it. <laughs> Way to pop my ego a little bit there, buds. <laughs> but yeah, they 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 are completely infatuated with ice fishing. Like ice fishing is yeah, they love it. It's it's so right. weird. Like open water. I mean, I'm still because uh, my oldest is seven. She turns eight uh, at the end of this month, and then my the second one, the second oldest is five, and she or sorry, actually she just turned six. Sorry, and they open water is still a little tough for them you know doing the casting and everything right now they're 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 getting it they can cast just fine and you know open their bill and everything but it's just uh uh they're still on with the using a bobber and stuff still right now but i'm slowly, yeah and i'm sorry slowly... that's how you catch fish yeah, that's how they catch yeah. fish but I'm i tell... still get fish for crappies with bobber oh, I'm, I'm telling you right now though <laughs> i go slow and reel it in i love crappies are my second law that's what i grew up fishing so that's, that's my number one i mean i'm not great at it like <laughs> like i say but yeah they 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 totally love this guy they want to go fishing with him because you know he he entertains them by catching fish and that just does everything else the leg work of setting you just shit. Gotta, when, when the kids are young like that you just got to keep them entertained with catching fish and then yeah. You know, when I, my son is young, you know, they go dance on the ice or go, 
you know, swimming, you got to make it about the kids when they're young. Like yeah. a lot of parents screw up and force their kids and that's when yeah. they lose the passion. Like I always preach, we just wrote an article last year in like Minnetonka magazine that um, if you're fishing for five minutes and then playing with bait and then swimming for 25, like let them do it and then come back. Yep. So exactly. um, you, you got to recruit them young and just have a balance. So yeah. Yep. That's pretty much what I do. You can ask him. I like, I don't even really fish when I take them out. I mean, I, I, I try to touch the pole, but nah, it's just uh, like you just said, it's about them. You know, dad, I'm hungry, dad. I need, you know, this, or Hey, whoa, something's wrong with my line. Dad. Like that, you know, girls, right. Yeah. It's, it is what <laughs> my it dad, is. My dad was yeah, like kind of brutal at the young age. Like he always strived to like, if you like want to fish, you got to take your own hook or you got to bait your own hook. You got to take your fish out. <laughs> you're not fishing like so i loved it i was such a tom growing up so i was like all right and then he always strived us like also in sports like he pushed us really well like at a young age like you want to be good at sports play against the boys so like getting into fishing it was like no big deal for me like i you know it can be intimidating for women but it's like you know for me it was not a big big transition you know like i'd been playing to get basketball i wanted to be good at basketball because i wanted to play in college and all that like I went up to the local gyms and I would play the boys every Friday night at open gym. <laughs> so, yeah. But that's how you get better. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. For, yeah. So challenge yourself and I'll do it. My dad always said you can do anything men can do. So, yeah. Yeah. Actually, I, I kind of want to ask you about that. So mm -hmm. um, uh, fishing, I guess most people would think it's kind of like a, I don't know, a guy's sport or whatever. So do you think there's certain challenges a woman uh, faces that is different compared to like a guy in, let's say, the tournament circuit or whatever? Yes. So I'm not going to like sit here and play this card. Like for so long, I feel like people were just saying, yes, sir. Yes, sir. To this industry, like, oh, it's the same. When can women can do it just like it? Yes, women can do it just like men can. Don't sit here and tell me it's the same because it's not. <laughs> it's not the same. However, I always preach to every woman, fish do not discriminate at all. Okay. Mm -hmm. I strive for equity in the sport of fishing. What equity means to me, not equality. Equality is sameness. Equity is fairness. Really what we need to do is just encourage women. Of course, there's going to be sexism. There's going to be all that stuff, right? It is a predominantly male dominated sport with men. That comes with the territory, right? Mm -hmm. However, it's about voicing of change. It's having sponsorships behind that. And technically, women kind of can have easier times with sponsorship, generally speaking. Like, sometimes women, you know, it's per se that depending on who you are, like, women tend to have an easier time. There was this trend, like, people were taking on women just to have a girl. Um, but really, a lot of these companies... I stand for and like who I work with, like I look for values when I work for companies. For me, it's like standing for God and standing for women. And I don't hush that piece. I get, <laughs> I get called a feminist. I get called all this and that's okay. But I am not going to be hushed anymore. I used to say, you know, we as women, I want to be represented as a female angler and I'm proud of that. Like, I'm not going to be hushed. Like why be hushed the female voice? Like we don't need to be, we need to be created as equal. Um, I want to be remembered as an angler and be remembered as an angler. And so we don't need to pretend that we're not different. So, cause we are different. <laughs> yeah. So I just yeah. want to encourage women, like you're told in the industry, like, Oh, you have to fish like a man, fish like this, go up the male ranks. No, you can fish like a woman and be proud, you know? So don't ever feel victimized by that. Like, yes, at the end of the day, fish don't discriminate and it is you against the fish. So be that voice to change and like equality and equity will come in the sport. Work with companies that really stand for women. And I promise you, you're going to do well. It's all about having a team behind you because nothing's done alone. That's awesome. Now I, I might sound like an idiot here, but okay. So <laughs> nothing new. <laughs> thanks, man. <laughs> so, okay. What's the difference between... When, when someone tells you you need to fish like a man versus you need to fish like a woman so, to me when you go fishing <laughs> you're just fishing i don't know the damn difference so can no you what i mean by me? that like i guess in the in, like tournament world like yeah. we're told like you're not your con like okay this is how i look at it 
women in fishing are minimized for every little victory or every little defeat that we do. We're, we're minimized. Okay. Mm, okay. They can make an accomplishment. It's not, oh, I'm just a co-angler, right? Or I just got Walmart because I was related to Erwin Jacobs because my last name was related to the owner of FLW, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Catch, catch that. And if it was a man, nothing, that would never happen. So women tend to be minimized for our efforts. And say I go out of my tournament and I fail, we never get a chance to fail. And this has happened to several women, not just me, right? So if a man were to do that, <laughs> that's the difference. Like, um, we're told, oh, we have to climb the male ranks, which there really is. It's a, it's, it's, it is a, I don't want, <laughs> my opinion is these ranks are designated and made for men. However, they've been a lot more conducive to women, but when you go to these, um, exp like if you go to these, these tournaments and you go to registration, you'll get little gifts. A lot of the gifts are for men. There'll be clothing for men, stuff for men you know, but it's getting better. I'm not going to sit here and say it's not. The industry is striving for, for change and, and that. I'm not saying it's not. You know, Title IX happened in the 70s. There's uh, fishing high school leagues. So nobody's complaining. I just want awareness. Like I come from an education standpoint. I work in education, so we're taught on equity. So um, it's just about awareness, like having a different view on the industry a little bit. So um I just have a little different viewpoint on it. Um, but yeah, it's just shedding light on that. Like you though, as a woman can accomplish anything. Don't be hushed. Don't tell anyone you can't, you know, do something. Mm -hmm. Of course you're going to, you know, I've had guys cut me off in tournaments. This happens to women all the time and whatever, you know, you just do what you can and smile and there's sexist comments. I've had women get harassed, but you know what? I'm not going to go into details about that, but you just, you know, that's diminishing the female voice, but what can you do to overcome it? So um, bottom line, women are held to a different standard than men in the industry. So that's when I say about fishing, the difference between fishing like a man and fishing like a woman. Does that make yeah. sense? You know, totally. Yeah. And, and as a father of four daughters, that sucks. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, it does because it's, I mean, it's, it's a bunch of bullshit. I mean, I, I like the pros. Yeah. yeah. The pros, some of the pros like can screw up, right? And yeah. have sponsorship. Very some true. of them have been arrested. They and gone to jail, but they don't lose sponsorship. But if I see something on social media that's uh, not in line with a uh, sponsor, then I can lose a sponsorship. So it's just, I'm just saying it's never happened it's, to me. But <laughs> I've had a talking to, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're just held to a different standard and we're under the microscope and um, I just want the awareness to be there. Like, you know, um, nobody's complaining. Nobody's trying to put anybody's career down. Like nobody's yeah. nobody. We all have our own place in the sport. Like there's been podcasts out recently that I felt were pretty sexist. Like I'm really tired of men trying to tell us women, like how our career should be like really. Oh, wow. they, yeah. Every, every, I mean, men have a right to say what they want, but like as women, you don't know what it's like for us to go out and fish and do our job. Like we all have different goals. We all have different jobs that we're to accomplish um, and ambitions. And we're all trying just because I fish tournaments doesn't mean I want to fish the elites just because of that. You know, like mm -hmm. a lot of people do, there are a lot of females out there kicking butt that want to fish the elites that want to do that. And I hope they do. Like, I hope they make it. And we hope to see that. But like, if we don't, like if I don't, or other people don't, make the elites were discredited for our efforts. So I don't know. It's just a weird industry or we're not called pros and it's just, it's all this entitlement. And I'm like, you know what? We just need to love. I, I come from a place of God and love. I think we need to stop the judgments. All right. Hey, can, hey, hey Kit, we're, we're never going to be pro fishermen, all right? No, <laughs> no you're already a better not, fisherman. Yeah. yeah, you're better than us already. Yeah. I, I'm, 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 I'm not going to lie, man. I'll be like, yeah, sponsors would look at me and be like, oh, shit. That guy's got to go. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> it's okay. No. But you know what? That, and that's why we, I, I really love the platform that, you know, Fishing Kid myself. I hope this isn't above everybody's head. No, I don't want to, I'm supposed to be fun. Like, it I'm is. just trying to, like, 
take a different perspective. I love everybody. Everyone has a place in fishing. Yeah. And no, no one no. has the right to say where anyone is in fishing. So. Our audience uh, will definitely appreciate that. I, I, I truly believe that. And like I said, you know, fishing kid, myself, man, we don't care. We, we love, we, we, yeah. created, we created this podcast because we wanted it to be about fishing and about right. beer and just to make sure in an awareness, like you just said, is and, this is the thing. Like you were just saying, like a lot right. of people don't realize the, the sh- that you guys have to go through as women in, in the fishing industry and, 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 you know, in the, in the circuit as a pro fisherman, you know, there's a lot of good too. So yeah, of course, but, you know, but, those, but those That's little things, I... those little things though, shouldn't, you shouldn't have to deal with that. Well, let me say that something that stuff fuels my flame. So like, yeah. I'm not complaining. Like I just see aware. <laughs> the reason I speak about it, I I've sat on this for years before mm-hmm. I, I started to speak up this year about it. It's because women started coming to me with issues and I'm like, okay, I can't sit back anymore. Like I I just, I'm not going to, people try to silence me. People people call me crazy and a feminist and that's okay. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. Us as public figures who are sponsored at, you know, we do need to take ownership. So if I'm doing a podcast like this, I need to own it though. If somebody's going to attack me after this podcast, it's on me and I own it and validate their feelings. Like, we don't do that enough with social media. And I think people get misconstrued conversations. And I think if any one of us are doing podcasts, we need to own our conversations Mm -hmm. that we're putting out to the world. And I think a lot of pros don't do that. And just, you know, if we're doing a podcast and we're having uh, controversial like conversations or anything, like we need to own what we're saying regardless and not blame anyone else for what we're saying. So don't worry, we only got like five or six listeners. He's being modest. We Praise got like Lord. 10 <laughs> or 15. All right. 10, 10, 10 or 15. It's all right. They're, they might Is come that, out. Are they all family members too? Damn it. <laughs> no, our family doesn't listen to <laughs> you know, us. My wife doesn't listen to my shit, man. She goes, I, I think I said this a couple episodes ago. She goes, I, I don't want to hear him talk. I, I hear him all the time. I don't need to listen to you. I don't need to watch you. I'm like, thanks for the support, honey. Yeah. But, but she does give us a thumbs up <laughs> she gives us the like kit so she goes to your channel. she likes it without listening <laughs> she always goes to our channel she doesn't watch it or listen she just gives you the thumbs up so if you're ever wondering like who's that first one it was my wife so i give her that i'll it. take it i'll take it we all have our own things right like my son loves his snowboarding like it's okay like he's not that into fishing right now so we can't <laughs> it is what it is there you go <laughs> yeah. yeah i feel i feel like uh even though uh, like the conversation we 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 just had, uh, I think with the uh, with our platform and stuff, we we should always try to have try to have these difficult discussions because uh, I don't know. I, I think it just drives everything forward because I don't know. I guess once like what what else could we talk about if everything just I don't know. Do I want to say bland or stale? Yeah. And you know, it's not just fishing. I mean, women deal with this in different industries and, and yeah. male dominated industries, you know, all the time. And it, it's just a matter of conversation and it's critical yeah. thinking. It's not having a one way conversation. It's critically thinking and having these open dialogue just makes room for growth. Right. I, I'm just sharing my perspective. I'm not saying I'm right or wrong. It's not about being right or wrong. It's indifferent. We can all be indifferent, but we need to just be respectful. So. No, I, I, I like what you were saying earlier, like bring awareness. You, you're not trying to change anything overnight. You just bring awareness so that you can move to the right direction. Like Kit yeah. was just saying, like move forward instead of staying stagnant or, or living in the past and keeping it the same. Because so. there are women, yeah. like if you look at trap leagues in high school, there are so many women involved. And um, that's, you need the retention young. There's fishing leagues all over in high school. Most of them are males. So how do we get the women? Cause there's a lot of girls out there that want to fish. So according to Take Me Fishing, um, I work with them as an ambassador, the Recreational Boater Fishing Foundation. Mm-hmm. According to them, 48% of women make up the fishing industry, but they drop out at an alarming rate because they don't see themselves in the sport. That means they're mm-hmm. under, cause we're under represented or misrepresented. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just due to some marketing stuff. Like, you know, we want authentic, real anglers out there, but I just think it's education. I really am having these conversations, having these real time conversations and us who are in the industry, being authentic, having awareness and being kind and compassionate towards every other female. 
I really do think us women need to work together. We don't all have to have the same agreeing um, views or anything, but we can also be respectful to each other. Nobody's trying to like bash each other's careers. I think, I think the biggest problem in bass fishing that I see for women is we have this scarcity complex that only one female can make it to the top to succeed because they want to see one at the pro level at the elites. The first pro will be the best, you know, which is going to be the greatest accomplishment ever. But there's so many females accomplishing things, chipping away that they're not realizing there's so many women doing things already or that have in the past, like Pam mm-hmm. Martin, Wallace, Kim Bain Moore. These women have paved the way and done so much for the sport of bass fishing. Um, and where they're forgotten. And it's like, no, w- there's little steps in building the momentum for women in fishing. Nobody needs to prove and be the elite. It'd be great. Yeah. yeah. But um, it's going to be great when somebody does make it. But we can all rise together. I just feel, you know, JFK said, <laughs> rising tide lifts all boats. I really think women can be like that. Thank you for joining us at uh, Beer Fish Fanatics. And this episode is actually brought to you by Whisker Seeker Tackle. So make sure you guys go to whiskerseeker.com for all your catfishing gear. Enjoy the episode, guys. I'm cracking another beer. There you go. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> cheers, cheers, oh, cheers. And, um, you know, this is the thing. What you just said, a lot of businesses and a lot of people, should, that should be eye-opening. You just said 48% of, you know, girls, who they want to get into fishing. That's ching, ching, dollar signs. What people, you know, a lot of this industry doesn't realize. That's a lot of money that they could. I think industries realize it, but why are we missing it then? I, I think I'm I, starting to have good conversations with my partners. Like um, you should, they're you missing should. the female market because yes. we don't know the female consumer. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think we're, you know, we're going to see some cool projects for me this year. I'm really excited that I got to work on some cool things this year. And mm-hmm. uh, I just think we need to listen better and listen to our consumers. And mm-hmm. like, I'm a mother, I shop differently than I, you know, and I want to put out content that's relative to moms, relative to anglers that are new, you know, not just the tournament anglers, because it's over, you know, there's a lot of great women out there right now putting out great content for women that are want to get into tournaments, which is great. I think we need a segment of how to for women that want to get out there, you know, just how to. There's a lot of great ice stuff out there. I'm not a huge ice fisherman, so I love seeing all the ice stuff right now. It's been great. We have a really good representation here in the Midwest going on, and I'm, I'm really loving what I'm seeing up here. Um, but yeah, it's just education. It's like education, 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 and, and stop the scarcity complex. There isn't a scarcity complex. There's tons of us women making a lot of waves in the fishing. I agree. I, it's a, it's a, I don't know, like you just said, I don't know why all these uh, big companies, corporations are not targeting. They should be because well, they, like, they are. I'm not going to say they're not. They definitely I mean, are. They are, but they, I think they, if they were to go full force in regards to targeting, you know, I mean, like that side. I think we're all figuring it out, especially after true. this 2020, right? Yeah. Nobody, very true. nobody knows. Um, these companies are smart. They hire really smart people. Um, you know, we make up a small market compared to like men still buy majority of the fishing, you know, stop. So let's take that into account. Like, Mm -hmm. um, but how do you buy that? How do you, how do we convert? So, you know, it's interesting. Like it's just having conversations and, um, I don't know, I don't know the answer. I I'm not in that market. So I just like to learn and hear, hear people. I like to go to these charity events and actually um, a lake leader like slash tournament director in two weeks here we're doing a um, fishing for life is a huge nonprofit in Minnesota it's a Christian nonprofit they get people fishing we're doing holes for heroes it's a charity for veterans Um, I'm doing like the all women's lake Um, I have some lead guides and then we're doing a bunch of good stuff and we're competing against a bunch of different lakes so pray we win guys. So all my awesome. veterans get prizes and I got a bunch of extra prizes. Seagar donated some extra line and some other sponsors. And um, yeah, so it's going to be a great event. And I do a lot of that stuff here in Minnesota. I'm on the Born of Men fish also. That's um, awesome. Cause yeah, no fishing kit. He, he just did a uh, event right here in Iowa for veterans, right? Kit. 
yeah, yeah. We took oh, out. Uh, yeah, we took out some veterans. Oh, uh, I, I kind of just joined late. Uh, I, I had nothing to do with organizing or, um, getting the vets together or anything. I was, I was just kind of there to film it, and uh, just be a part of it. But yeah, there's this local group called Angling with Arlie. They took a whole bunch of vets out to a private lake. Uh, they catered food, took the vets out, you know, gave them buckets with the equipment and everybody caught fish, gave everybody prizes. It was a pretty good time. Like a lot of those guys, most of them never ice fish. There was even some dudes from um, Texas that came up here. You know, what's great is that you did that is because what I've heard from these anglers is that um, just having that time away and like getting their distractions and being on the water is just great. They're grateful for that. And mm-hmm. so, uh, congrats to do that. You know, like, I just think we need to do more of that stuff. So yeah. that's what fishing's about. I, th- I think, um, sometimes, uh, it's not us. I would just say it feels like the industry kind of takes it so serious in a way that they forget to just enjoy it does i don't know if that rings a bell or sense oh, yeah. like, yeah. like everybody's so focused like i gotta catch the biggest fish i gotta catch the fish or i gotta win this tournament or whatever like they forget to enjoy like you're just saying to be outdoors a little bit like just yeah. enjoy it man well it gets too commercialized right yeah when that's, that's... you are doing it full-time as a pro and i mean i give them so much credit those pros and the elites and i have the highest regard to them because it's, it's got to be super stressful, like to do that and fish for checks. Um, mm-hmm. um, for me, that lifestyle would be very hard on me, especially as a mom. Um, not saying I wouldn't do it in the future. I just couldn't do that right now. Is it healthy? It wouldn't make me healthy at all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I like what I'm doing now, like the in-between doing both. And, you know, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I just, you know you're right. We have to be passionate about it and fish because we love it. And these guys do love it. That doesn't mean they don't love it. It's just that sometimes we, I get so ingrained in our work and we do have sponsor obligations and stuff like that. But yeah, I do still fish for fun. Like I went all last summer and went up to make Malax and I fished the crap out of the small mouse up there and just had a fun week with my friends up there. And, you know, sometimes we just need to like tune it off and it's like i don't need to be on social media posting <laughs> oh boy yeah i do but it's like you gotta yeah, no, I, off. i'm with you i i I'm, I'm like i was a, just hate social go, media but it's just but like what, when you do it for work you have to and but then yeah. i was in lake picachos mexico so i just got back so i have my angler tail line right now um Matanas person in Minnesota right now. Right. <laughs> we were talk- yeah, we were talking about that right before. How, hey, how was that trip? Can you explain to us what, what was the trip about and how was that trip? I highly recommend anyone who wants to go to Mexico to fish to go to Lake Picacho's uh, through Ron Speedway. Or Ron, I keep calling him Ron Speedway. <laughs> yes, yeah, Speedway. It's Ron Speed Adventures. <laughs> um, yeah, they do it on El Sato and Lake Picacho's. Lake Picacho's is where you go to catch average four to five pounders all day, every day. Our group caught over 3,500 fish <laughs> between Jeez. nine of us. My fingers were saw. It was an absolute dream. I slept like a baby. I had my own cabin, everything. You go out with people, guides every day. Yeah, it's a guided trip, but you're out with you. So we had our little, I went with the major league fishing crew. I went with the GM and some tournament directors and people there. I used to, I helped out with an event. So they invited me. It was super fun. I got to know everybody. We had our own little derbies every day. And we're in the mountains and these mountains are absolutely stunning. And it, you don't believe like you're in Mexico because it's just so beautiful. And then um, it gets hot at day in the, the day, but it was cool in the morning. So it was just absolutely beautiful. Um, the biggest fish caught was seven pounds and yeah, the cabins were beautiful, super nice, but the people there were absolutely the most salt of the earth people. They took care of you every night. They'd bring me tea to my room. <laughs> a funny story. They called me snow white because every day I had an animal in my room. First day I had dogs. Second day I had no third day. I had literally a rooster. We couldn't figure out where it was. It was like on the, top. it was, it was so loud the morning. I'm like, where is this rooster? It's gotta be in my house. I can't find it. Looked on the back porch, front porch. I'm like, God, where is it? And my friend found it. It was by the couch. And then I came home the third day. I had a bird in my bathroom. We couldn't get it out. And then there was a bat. And then there was a lizard. I'm like, 
Snow White. <laughs> wow. That is entertaining. That's a good, great trip right there. <laughs> that was fun. It's fun. Yeah. No, it was a great trip. It was uh, great. And then we got to spend one day at the beach and I walked the beach. We got to walk the beach in Mazawan and we came home. It was just a great group of people at MLF and what they're doing with the league there. Major League Fishing yeah. is really changing the game. They have such a smart group of people working for them. I'm just so excited to see where they take, take the whole league. Um, I'm just honored that I got to go on the trip with Don rocks and thank you, Ron, for taking care of us, uh, speed. And yeah, it's going to be a cool year to see major league fishing take off and what's to come in the future for them. We should see if we can get a tournament director on kit. It'd be kind of cool. I can, I can line you up with Aaron. Dude, Cause on. I, I kind of want to know what they do. Cause I mean, a lot of people think like, you know, it, yeah, you need what, to get educated on your bass. Yeah. <laughs> that would be so cool because a lot of people don't know what, what happens behind the scenes of, of yeah. a whole tournament, of a whole, you know, you being a director of the entire thing. So that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, no, that'd be pretty badass. To get I'd be happy to recommend for sure. Of oh, course. Be fun. And then plus they can, hopefully they can have some beer. Right. <laughs> he loves beer. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Yeah. Love yeah, no, he, uh, they all, yeah, he, um, and they're great. They're great people in that major league. And then you guys can get educated. It's always great to have different views of the industry and cool. the fishing industry is yeah. such a big industry. You know, yeah. I'm not, just, I don't want to pigeon myself just to the bass tournament world. Like we get pigeonholed, like fishing such a big industry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, so this is the thing. This is probably like, he fishes like kit, like a lot of fish. We okay, what do you love to fish for? There we go. Uh, I'll just say bass isn't on the highest. Bass yeah, isn't buddy. the highest on my list. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> his, his, well, catfish and wipers. I would. Say, well, that's a bass. It's just you know, uh, you different know, different kind of bass. You know, you know bass. catfish are fun. I caught like one of my best catfish ever this year on the river on a jig and trap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Spin, on a spin rod. I was like, dude. <laughs> yeah, you never I, know. I, you know. I mainly target a lot of catfish panfish walleyes i really love catching walleyes i'm i'm pretty sure you got you gotta love walleyes right you're from minnesota you have to love walleye um we're a walleye state but i don't love walleye. <laughs> oh no <laughs> no I, i'll go when the bass aren't biting so no <laughs> you know no, everyone they all, all the walleye guys are all like oh you fish for bass because you can't fish a walleye oh. my page i can i can catch walleyes Challenge. um challenge right there it's uh yeah, that's a minnesota thing well like guys and bass like oh you know they go back and forth some fun banter like i call them gravel lizards you know yeah 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 i hear that and they call bass green carp it's just fun you it know is. um i just love fishing for bass because it's a lot of different skill sets you're always moving i like to move walleyes are super fun i learned a cool new technique for walleyes this year on the river i went with my friends from here uh down in pool four and we i learned this new uh, uh technique called the dubuque rig have you heard of that that's from iowa dubuque rig, uh, dubuque dubuque rig. Iowa. Dubuque i know that. iowa yeah yeah dubuque rig it's like a drop shot but it's not it's like a carolina it's a drop shot but the, instead of a weight you have a you have a jig so you have a really long like 24 inch long leader with like a ringworm and then you put a half ounce jig on the bottom with like a swim bait and you just like literally drag it at like one mile an hour oh. the walleyes killed it it's a river technique so all right i loved it i might we try got, to warm up. <laughs> we got listeners and viewers in the quad cities you guys are gonna have to explain the uh dubuque rig to us because they're i'm probably, not an expert on this no, i just I don't, learned I, this okay <laughs> they're, they're probably listening to this or they're watching it they're like god you guys are from iowa what a bunch of idiots how you guys not know the dubuque rig <laughs> yeah they, look it up it's it catches them on the river i guess it's a river technique and i'm telling you it caught them we caught them in like 15 feet in main river current so dubuque i was impressed rig. so yeah okay. dubuque rig kit dubuque i guess rig. i i guess i don't love walleyes as much as i thought i did <laughs> Oh man! I just gonna... love to fish, man. I love to catch Agreed. everything. But if I'm going fishing, like I want to catch, I have to go fish. Like I'll go for anything. But if I want to go fish. It's bass and crappies. <laughs> so, but no, but I. But I'm not like I. I know you guys probably ice fish more than me. Like I, 
I, I'll ice fish for rec and all that, but I'm not going ice fishing like every weekend. Like I'm not going to pretend like I'm some ice fisherman because I'm not. <laughs> it's, I'd rather go on my waders up in Monticello up here and fish open water like as much as I can. I just ice fishing um, was never like did it for me. It doesn't, you know, it's fishing, but it's, not, you know, but I like to go especially with my son because he likes ice fish and like to go with the kids because it is fun you know to play around in the vexlars and all that and you can still chase weed lines i'm super excited for our event this weekend but i just like to be authentic it's like it's not my jam <laughs> no I, it's okay because a lot of people like it's too damn cold and and i totally get that but some people yeah. just you know some people are just like ice fishing we get the ice itch um i get that but then like after about three or four months, you get to the point where, all right, love ice fishing and all, but it, it, it's time. We're ready. Yeah, we're ready. Ready, yeah. ready to get on, you know, you know, some Terrible. open waters and t-shirts here, right. you know, yeah, I, I totally get that. Oh, I totally, but it's so cool. Like the culture here in Minnesota, and I'm sure it's the same in Iowa. Like today when we were scouting all our lake, I'm going to go pre-fish with these ladies and help, you know, find fish, but like you still find fish the same, you know? Um, but all these people have communities on the ice and it's like grumpy old men, like that movie. It's like, truly like we, there's communities on ice. People don't understand that in the South, but it's like legit thing up here. <laughs> <laughs> truly is. We got to get some more people that, from the down South kit on our pocket. We, we haven't had any too. Salt water. Like, I got yeah, salt yeah. water people. I can oh. send you. We, we've had some salt water, but we haven't had like people from the South like down sale yeah we, we, need to, we need to get some of that so we'll, we got to work on that kid nice. just a just to learn their fishing techniques and just learn from them too fishing is so different everywhere in the world isn't it it's so cool yeah, to learn. Sure. i learned a cool technique last year when we went with take me fishing to the miami boat show we got to go fishing for sailfish um for um this whole huge campaign for women making waves they're doing a huge push for women and that's what we learned about this 48 percent in the industry and we fished for uh sailfish with kites big kites they put them up in the air and they throw them out and it has two lines on it and they're about 200 yards out and 100 yards out yeah literally this is what happens and they have a bait with a bobber, which I, I don't know if it's called a bobber because I'm not, <laughs> able. but it, the line has to go in the first 10 to 20 feet of the water column and that okay. kite and the line is out there. And then you're hand, like you're not hand lining it, but you're opening the bail of the line and making sure it stays within that column on that kite. It is the coolest technique I've ever learned. And thing I've mm -hmm. learned how to do was super fun then when they came in because the sailfish are pelagic. So they move in that top water column and they constantly move. So when a, two sails came down and the kites went, it was so cool. The coolest thing I've ever seen and done. So kite fishing? Is that what it's, it is? I don't know what it's called. Like, kite fishing? It's with kites for sails. It's like right. the coolest thing ever. What the hell? I'm going to look at that. Kite fishing. <laughs> I'm going to have to look that up. That's interesting. It's a saltwater technique. Huh. That's crazy. Yeah, I never, I never even heard of anything like that. Yeah. I mean, man, if I didn't live in Minnesota, I could... If I could, I would could trade in that life. I could saltwater fish, man. Saltwater fishing, I can see why people get addicted. It is the, like, to catch those fish and, like, you never know what you're going to catch. I mean, saltwater fishing is incredible. <laughs> yeah. Man, we got, you haven't okay. done it. You guys have to. I, I uh, no, I, I, I done it because I used to live in California and I, I did out there because uh, I lived in San Francisco and, you know, the Bay Area and everything. I did. But we had uh, Nick Morris um, from Hawaii, and he okay. was, yeah, he, he keeps telling us, like, when are you guys going to come to Hawaii? We're like, dude, there's COVID. Hold on. <laughs> let's let's yeah. wait a little bit, bro. You know, and, um, but yeah, we we got to make a trip. We, we really want to. I, I really want to fish in the ocean, like you're just saying, like, just like, I don't know what the hell we're going to catch. I just want to well, just. Yeah, you'll have so much fun. I mean, I've caught Amberjack. I mean. Amberjacks are tough, man. They'll give you a workout. You'll never like recover from that, but <laughs> no, but yeah, you will have so much fun. Whatever you catch, you, you just, you never know. Like I pulled up a puffer fish and you're like, <laughs> yeah, go. You guys will not regret it. Yeah, That's I want the biggest to. fish you've ever caught. Asian carp. It was like 30 pounds. 
<laughs> the biggest fish that we uh, me was probably I'm trying to think it's just a like a regular carp maybe like 15 pounds I think that's yeah I mean we don't we don't have the uh, yeah that's that, 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 that's that's my extent of large fish um, yeah but yeah no because uh like i say we, we we had um nick here on on our podcast he's like dude get over here we'll, we'll get you on 200 pound tuna i'm like huh yeah i don't even know what the no, hell i'm gonna do yeah exactly that's what he fishes for he, he fished for ahis you know he's just like dude it's 200 pounds i'm like i was freaking out a little bit like how the hell do you get the fish on the boat 200 pounds i'm not he hand line it and i don't know like when i when i caught a goliath grouper it was 250 pounds in the salt water and we hand like i mean just to feel and then when you they come up you feel that prehistoric creature and it's just like mm. wow they let it we let it go obviously yeah. yeah it's like the coolest thing ever like to see fish like that so those groupers are they like how big do they get i know I've... goliath groupers get huge okay. like, I don't know. I, i'm not a salt expert so i want to <laughs> say they get up to like up to 500 pounds yeah like more. way up there like close to a thousand pounds i think okay because i have I've... no idea i'm not gonna quote it on yeah. that <laughs> what i caught was 250 <laughs> all right so so all right listeners or viewers you know comment let us know what's the what, what's the biggest a grouper gets because i swear no. i've seen some goliath videos. grouper goliath. Goliath, goliath group i i swear i've seen youtube videos where like dude it looks like a freaking whale man yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's huge i, don't but, I really I don't okay all right, kid. We gotta go, man. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah, ocean fishing. We're we're in Iowa. I feel like Iowa's kind of like in a weird spot where tornado alley. Kinda. Yeah, and then like everywhere around us, like Minnesota, you guys got a whole bunch of cool fish that we don't. Wisconsin does. Illinois, Missouri, Nebraska, Kansas, South Dakota. Uh, I feel like we're just in a weird spot where you just got left out. Yeah, you just got left out. I'm sorry. I have nothing good to say about Iowa well, either. <laughs> hey, wait, wait. I'll wait. tell you. Okay, I have a story. This is a true story. I was driving my sister home from Arizona, and the two times, the two times that I ever did this, she was living in Arizona. First time, we got, I don't know, we got stuck in Arizona. That was bad weather. Second time was the worst. There was a legit tornado. We saw the rain coming at us this way. A semi was tipped over, so we stopped at the gas station. I have to tell you this funny story. The scariest thing happened. We pulled over and the cop came and everyone's freaking out because the, the tornado was literally where we were. And the cop's like, don't go anywhere. There's nowhere else to go. We're like, and we're all, my sister and I and my cousin, we're all having high anxiety. We're like, we got to get inside this gas station. And I have a bat in the back of the car. We're like, breaking in, like super psycho, right? <laughs> like my cousin who's, this guy gets off his this bus and starts smoking right by the gas pump. And my cousin's like, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> so we had this that crazy day, right? <laughs> like uh, in Iowa. And then we got stuck. We had to go to a bed and breakfast to stay the night. And it looked like they had skinned people for their lamps. So... <laughs> We didn't have a very good stay at Iowa. So just so, Iowa. So, so just so you know, that's how great Iowa is. It, <laughs> it created that indention of history into your mind memory that you'll never forget Iowa. That's how great Iowa Oh, is. we never forgot that trip. Exactly. I'm like, but, oh, I'll never forget that trip as long as I live. I was in college. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> but I'll go back though, Kit. Iowa, we, 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 we have fish that a lot of Northern people don't get. And we have a lot of fish that Southern people don't get. So you're mm -hmm. right. We don't, we don't have the monsters, you know, of a specific species, but we do have the vast variety of species to catch here in Iowa. Yeah. And that's, that's the one thing that I think I like about Iowa. <laughs> I'm trying to get, come on, don't man. Get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I love Iowa. But, <laughs> but there's, trust me, man, there, I, there's other fish i would love for us to be able to target it and try and catch but what are you gonna do man you know, that's just part of where that's the landscape man you can't you can't you can't you know you can't uh, you gotta travel you gotta yeah. like like nicole said let's go down south go to the ocean if you want to catch specific fish. and there's so many great fisheries yep. along yep. the way you know i've been very spoiled and fortunate that when i fished for walmart i got to drive and 
all over the country, you know, like I was very fortunate. A lot of us can't say that. So I traveled for two years. I fished everywhere from New York all the way to Florida and all those Southern states. Like I love the Tennessee area, like Chickamauga, all those lakes in the Tennessee area, Alabama are just gorgeous. So if you ever get the chance, just go down South, even, you know, and even if you guys want to get more educated and bass and just jump in a co-angler tournament. So. All right. No, I, I agree with you on that. And we got to do that. Kit. Hey, we got to do this. All right, Kit. I mean, the kid, my kids are on uh, vacation. You're hopping in the van. We're, we can take a trip with, uh, w- with us. Let's just go drive and fish. Like she just said, we'll go down South. Um, we can even record like, damn, we suck. We don't know what the hell we're doing, but it'd be kind of fun. You could go to Florida. You guys yeah. could go do a road trip to Florida and go through all the cool rock or not the Rockies <laughs> the <laughs> other way, uh, the Smoky mountains. And you could do a whole road trip excursion and fish certain areas on the way. Yeah. And then you could totally hit up like Okeechobee and then you can make it to the ocean. You could do a whole series. It'd be super cool. And you could fish for peacock bass in the like drains. You can fish for the drains in Miami. Yeah. Right. See, nope. got, dude. All right, kid. We got, we, we'll plan this out. We, we got to do some stuff with this thing and we'll make it fun. We can be portable with the podcast and we can be fun. We can be um, just, just make it different and, and like you're just saying try for different species something new you know what i mean so um <laughs> holy crap we've almost been talking to nicole for almost an hour so i i mean i hope you had fun i mean it is i did i'm sorry i feel like i talked the whole time and you guys <laughs> didn't no that's, no, that's I, a fine it's fine no he actually i i talk a lot so it's all good <laughs> yeah, it, it is Thanks, Kit. Look at him. Fishing like, yes. kit. I love it. Fishing kit. Uh, yeah, you yeah, gonna yeah, have you your can. own fishing kit that you're going to make for everybody? Mm. You know, I should. That'd be a little cool. tackle fishing kit. Mm. Yeah, like it. a little mystery tackle box kind of deal. Yeah. That'd be cool. Your fishing cool. kit. Here you go. Hey, we're, we're, open to, we're definitely open to that. You know, hmm, that's a good let, me, I love let me write that down real quick. <laughs> that'd be but. cute. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man. Do uh, you got anything else for Nicole Kit? Because uh, I, I, I want to get you, I want to ask you more stuff about bass when we get another chance, because we, like you say, we don't really get a chance to target bass. I just want to ask you more information on how you catch bass and all that stuff. And we can, we can definitely Mm -hmm. do that in another episode. We get off. Yeah. We can do bass one-on-one like intro to bass. That'd be pretty cool. I I like to do education on that just because it's like, you know, let's keep it simple first for people. So yeah, yeah. that'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, your girls like just get them fishing, keep the kids fishing, and then take them swimming. If they don't want to fish that long, oh well. So, <laughs> yeah, keep. yeah, I guess um, all I got is uh, you have any last minute pieces of advice for, let's say, a young girl that wants to join a fishing club, but she's kind of intimidated because, let's say, it's all dudes. You have any advice for a young girl? Yeah, you know what, girl, you're gonna do it. You're gonna be okay. We are all in the same boat and we all started somewhere. Okay. You have a ton of people out here like myself, you can reach out to me, you can reach out to any people out there that are trying to make it and and look out to your local community and find a mentor, because you don't need to do this alone. And yeah, there are going to be up and coming other men or women doing it as well. And if you feel intimidated, have that mentor because, you know, I had my dad, he encouraged the crap out of me to fish against or compete against guys. So I always had that in my ear, like, mm-hmm. you're going to do this. You're better than them, you know? So, <laughs> so that was always encouraging for me. And um, so you just have to have a mentor, be patient with yourself. For me, I think you need to be founded on some strong values and keep your focus on, you know, for me, my focus is God and family first. Like people can get very lost in this game, but you need to have a solid foundation at home, have an education, keep your education, go to college, get a degree. If you're starting out, don't be discouraged. We've all cried. Trust me. We've all been made fun of. If there's comments, give it right back. If they start doing something to you, you know, if they're saying stupid stuff about girls, just whip out some tampons and throw them in oh, the boat. Boy. Or throw them. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you get sand, I, like, I, you, you know, and the, and the biggest thing is, um, I don't know how many female listeners or viewers we have, but I do know we have a lot of fathers. Yeah. So m- myself yeah. being a father of four daughters, can you give 
what would be, you know, before we leave here, um, what advice would you give them to be able to get, whether they want to get their daughters into fishing or not, but what kind of advice would you give them to help introduce their daughters or sisters really or nieces question. or or nieces into fishing? I would just say that be just listen to them, listen to their needs, um, listen to their concern. They're not the same as men. They're not the same as the boys. So don't try to say that it's the same because it's not. It's just not. Okay. However, encourage them that it's fish. Don't discriminate. To you against the fish at the end of the day. You are going to have a different set of challenges, period. Period. You are. You're going to have a little different challenges. It is. It is what it is. Uh -huh. But there are going to be up and coming women's leagues. There is. There will be. And if that's a better format for you, great. Keep going. If you love fishing, use something that fuels you. And then the dads just need to be encouraging and listen. So instead of trying to do it their way, try to listen and do it their women's way. <laughs> the girls way <laughs> use their knowledge and educate. Um, I guess what my dad did great was like, he always encouraged, 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 and he didn't push his agenda. He always just said, you're a woman, you can do this. And I said, you know what? I can. Bad ass. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. And you know what? And all the moms out there, you can do it too. Just, you know, balance your schedule and your kids. So <laughs> totally. Don't go uh, crazy. You know, I gotta take him snowboarding and stuff too. Perfect. So, so uh before, <laughs> nope, before we leave, uh where can they get a, a hold of you? Where can they reach out to you and, and yeah. check out all your um it's Nicole Fishing on Instagram and Nicole Jacobs Fishing on Facebook. I'll be starting up a new YouTube hopefully this year called Bass and Mama. Just gonna put out education and stuff uh for people I'll have it real time, have it be kind of funny stuff and have it be genuine like this is how we all fish we all screw up but also this is how you can do it right so uh yeah stay tuned for that coming as well perfect yeah if you ever need any advice don't feel don't feel like you can't reach out to me it's always an open ear here too a non-judgmental ear too perfect you rock thank, thank you, so, you much. so much for having me guys and uh i really appreciate it if you ever need anything from me please call all right Will cool do. sounds good thanks for coming on yeah thanks for having me all right, everybody. Welcome to another. Uh, the, I think that's the first time I messed that up. You need right. me to make the intro. No. <laughs>